Hey everybody, welcome back to Angry Badger Minis, where we're still working on Krieg, and unfortunately for me, not necessarily, not really unfortunately, but um, I just keep coming up with more ideas, you know, for my, my army here. Um, never mind my crazy animals in the background or whatever, it is what it is. Um, what you're looking at right here is I'm getting ready to make a, a mold, at least a half part anyway, um, half of it of um, these pipes here okay these are some random pipes that I found um, I forget when I got them on eBay or whatever it's been a while like a long while and I got them for my Space Hulk board and specifically to do what I'm going to do here which is make more of them um, because you know it only came with so much um, but in the process of what we've been talking about the last couple of nights and what I wanted to do with these chimeras and stuff, I've narrowed it down and I'm just going to do two chimeras. Um, and I wanted to show you generally what I had in mind and explain how theoretically it would work if it was, you know, really happening in the 40k universe. Um, <clears throat> I don't know how many of you are familiar with um, anti-personnel, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, uh, yeah, anti-personal obstacle um, breaching or um, uh, you know, your Miklik which is you know a lot bigger basically mind clearing um, if you've ever heard of that before but what gave me the idea besides the fact that I'm thinking to myself okay you know what happens if you know this chimera for instance and I don't know you guys are like too it's just a game don't sweat it don't worry about it and, and, and I'm not. It's just I really like to play narratively and I, and I, and I really want to have something that is unique. Okay? But anyway, you know, what happens if this, you know, this chimera is coming across a trench and the trench is just too wide? Okay? I mean, now it's like trying to go up like this and it really can't without destroying the trench if it even makes it up it. Okay? Well the only thing you could do is have some type of bridge laying device you know what i'm saying and, and not even just for the chimera what if it was another lehman russ or something like that all right well um there's nothing like that in 40k but combining the you know uh miklik if you will idea slash you know apob system and i'm going to show you guys what i'm talking about here in a second just just for those of you that don't know um, you will, you will see, uh, what I'm talking about. I'm just, I'm just pulling it up right now. Um, the only difference is the fact that, um, uh, we will not be, I, it's about the firing mechanism as a whole. Okay. So. I've got it pulled up. I'll show you in a second. But the idea is, if you guys take a look at this, and this is not actually attached to this Chimera. It's just for the, the video to show you guys. I made, you know, with an old uh, Lehman Russ tank, um, you know, uh, bulldozer blade. Um, <laughs> can't even talk right now. Uh, the actual, <clears throat> excuse me, um, support element that goes underneath, you know, the the, the actual structure of the blade itself. I made a rack and then I had these extra pieces that were part of the kit that came with you know these pipes or whatever including this piece in here. And inside here again this is just my imagination you see each of these three as well as this big hole right here. Ideally this probably looks like a gear to you and, and in fact it is but in my mind what it does is these are each jettison type, um, or not jettison, well, basically jettison type um, outlets, if you will, um, that would propel this stack, okay, that would propel this stack forward, not, not, not as far as we're going to show in the Miklik, but it's, you know, propel it forward of the you know the chimera to the point that it lays it out okay 
you know, just, just ahead of it, lays it out, and then the chim chimera, you know, can go across it. Now, you may be asking yourself, well, how would that, how would that work? Well, when I'm done with this, <clears throat> I'm hoping anyway, I'm hoping that I can fashion this in such a way that you'll have three different layers here um, so that I can literally, you know, well, I'll glue, you know, some of them together, you know, like in each layer, but then I'll have the rest of them fastened differently. But the, the fiction behind this is that each one of these, um, each one of these little ribs right here that you guys can see are, you know, and this is, you know, it's sci-fi. Um, once, once this is activated, okay, it, it causes, as it launches, it causes a, you know, a minor charge inside to detonate, not to explode, but to weld these together, okay? So that by the time they clear here, they are welded into a sheet that lands just like so. And it's it's right, I mean, again, it's, it's right there. There's almost no chance of it missing whatsoever. You know, it's 40K, it's not gonna miss, because in my mind, it's not gonna miss. And hey, if, if orcs can have their thing and, and things work because the orcs believe it can. Well, my Krieg, damn it, they believe it can. Um, but that's basically what I'm looking at. And then to give you guys an idea of, you know, what it looks like, I would also like to make this thing um, removable so that, it's like I said, it doesn't really have anything to do with gameplay. It's not an advantage type of thing or nothing like that. But I would like to have it in such a way that you know, when this thing is deployed, and you'll have to forgive me, we won't have all the pieces because some of them are in there. Um, you'll see this laid out like so. So that's deployed like that over a trench if you had an actual trench board. And then it's deployed, that's it. I mean, this is just for me, you know, my opponent doesn't affect him in any way. It's just, you know, it's for looks, whatever. And then, you know, your your track is able to go across it. Make sense? Pretty simple, right? All right, let me just move that over to the side. So let's go ahead and check out this video real quick, show you guys generally, mainly because Miklicks are awesome, but, uh, <laughs> um, Let's see here. Uh, let's see if I can get it to work. Mm, oh, there it is. All right, here we go, guys. As soon as I can get it to pull up. Order in the top. That wasn't supposed to happen. Oh, well. There we go. And here we go. Just so you're aware, it's C4, it's all inside there inside the, uh, um, the sheeting there. To give you context, I retired in 2012 and uh, we've been using these for a long time. This is your rocket that's actually going to deploy the entire Miklik, or the entirety of the Again, there they go. Um, okay. So essentially, that's the long type of launching mechanism that I'm talking about. The one, um, now, there's a difference between this one and the actual personnel one. Um, and the, the point of that is um, 
the the rope on the end or the lanyard on the end versus the personnel one, which I can show you here in a little bit, uh, that has an actual um, drag chute on it. Crimping! They're crimping deck cord right now um, in a blast cap, blasting cap. Um, but uh, All right. the end burns out. That's gonna be your time, and then using that time. You're so gonna anyway, out. what I was How saying. Let me just go ahead and find it. Um, Nobody's got paint. There you go. Put together. So, so two assault men come up, you know, with these on their back, or they used to. I, I mean, again, this is the year I retired. I don't, I don't know that the Marine Corps even has assault men anymore. And these guys are not Marines; these are uh, Army soldiers. But they come up. One has, you know, the front pack. One has the backpack. No pun intended, but the rear pack. We'll put it that way. And you'll see the drag chute that helps because there's not as much weight as well as the rocket that's used like with the vehicle born one. Silver. Green to green. It's that simple. After you get all that connected, then what you do, you start from the back. You work towards the front. Oh, I'm sorry. There you go. Five, four, three, two, one. Hope. Oh. Hope. Oh. I remember this was brought up by two, you know, two troops. There's your drag chute, lays it right where, where you want it. And it's all timed, and then it glows. Um, the, so essentially, that that's what's in my mind when it comes to this. And I wanted to make sure that once this was off, okay, whether, you know, you deploy it forward, whatever, that once this was off, that the rack didn't look stupid. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry, you guys can't even see what I'm doing here. Um, you know, that the rack didn't look stupid. But I thought that this would be a great way, you know, for some of my knowledge uh, to go into my game, you know, which I've done for years anyway. Um, and I think it's not, I don't think that it looks too bad. I think it looks relatively, you know, like it's part of the model. I mean, yeah, I've got, I've got a piece of sprue here and a piece of sprue there, you know, to give it some height above, um, you know, so I can clear the, the las guns and, and get this thing a little bit higher, um, you know, so that I can get the pipes higher. Um, and then they fit. I mean, once they're glued together, it'll be a lot easier. But they're, each of these, if you feel like making one of these, each of these uh, rack mounts, these two are not in line completely with these two because of the, the way that they sit. And I need them to work themselves out so that they sit in between one another. And these pipes aren't all glued together like even like each one of these pipes is like three different pieces um, but they're not all glued together either because I was I didn't want to do that because I'm I'm still gonna try to use them for Space Hulk but um, as you can see they basically fit in line which with each of the supports and they needed to and then you would just put you know the rest of your stuff on top but again these will all be connected as one piece or at least that's the goal and it actually won't look like this where you've got kind of a hump there it'll be more flat because there'll be um, this one needs three more attached to it to give the length that I wanted which was essentially from the back here to I think I said six inches one two three four five six six or seven inches is what I gave um, something like that Hold on. One, two, three, four, five. No, six inches, yeah. So, um, we're going to go ahead and make those. I'm just going to set this off to the side. Actually, I'll just put it there so you guys can still see what we're doing. Um, I just need to tape this up real quick. 
and we're going to mix ourselves some, some stuff. Now again, this will only work for, we're only be doing the first half. I'll do the other half tomorrow, you know, after I wake up or whatever. Um, I'm using painter's tape for those of you that are not, you know, used to doing this. Mainly, not because I'm too considerably worried about it leaking out. It doesn't really do that, um, but just in case. So, um, what we have below, in case you're wondering, inside here, for those of you again that are new to the channel, um, we have, <clears throat> excuse me, non-toxic, non-sticky clay, essentially, um, that allows, that, that covers the bottom so nothing can seep out the bottom, and two, you know, this is all pushed down about as far as we want it to go. And then if you take a look, you can see my, uh, the sprue that I have in there to create air channels. I will have to go back and, you know, once it's done and make sure that we cut right, you know, at the top of each of those and at the bottoms, you know, make sure that they are in fact, you know, connecting with the model itself or the plat, you know, the miniature, whatever. Um, and then the goal will be to pour in such a way that we force the air out. And the way that we will do that, this should be a relatively simple, simple pour. Um, one second here. The way that we would do that is if this was standing up, okay, and I'm, you know, this is the top. We would pour from this end, if you will, and it would, you know, it would drop down, and it would continue to drop because the air would be forced out through here, so forth and so on. Theoretically, that's that's the plan, um, and I think it's going to work pretty well. So again, for those of you that are not familiar with what we do here, uh, I got to grab some paper towels real quick right here. are going to use this smooth on mold star 15 slow part a and b don't buy the 20 I'm telling you um, and we're going to pour an equal amount in each cup and again we use these cups because they got the little lines in there and it shows us what we're looking for and i'm probably going to go to I'm probably gonna go to the first line if I can, because this is, we're about out in this in these jars here. Okay. Same thing here with part A. And before we mix these, I'm going to give a nice little spray with the Smooth On Universal Mold Release. I'm not exactly sure, but um, like it says, made especially for mold making casting, releases casting materials from rubber, plastic, and metal molds, lengthens, rub lengthens production life of rubber molds. Um, but regardless what it does, you know, I, I was going to say, I'm not entirely sure, but I'm pretty sure that it's essentially the, the same as like cooking spray in some ways. So we're going to go ahead and mix this, go ahead and let that empty itself.
this up. And you want to make sure you mix this up real good. You've got some working time with this again for those of you that are new to the channel. Um, it's not like you gotta you know be like super fast or anything. And this will cure in about four hours. Yeah, sometimes it cures faster, but um, four hours, you know, it's it's the safe bet. That's what it says on the package. Just let it, let it do what it does. Don't uh, don't try to rush your project. side the same side I'm gonna pour from and when it comes to pouring make sure that you you're gonna pour you guys can probably already see those bubbles that's that's what you're looking for you want to pour in a corner if you can you want to pour high and the reason you want to pour high is it helps get those bubbles out on the way down Just let it flow over. You got it where it's basically flowed over you can go ahead and scrape out the rest and I encourage you to do so don't just you know it's not gonna hurt anything to have more of a layer from the outside to your, your miniatures or whatever it is that you're casting Now some of you have seen me in the past, I used um, I used uh, my air compressor for my airbrush to help me get some of the bubbles out. Um, I will go ahead and tell you that I haven't been doing that lately and the reason being is the stuff that I was using before while it's the same <coughs> stuff um, it was old so it was a lot more was, there was there was a lot more viscosity to it whereas there's not with this and the air bubbles are able to come out a lot faster uh, and easier so I'm gonna sit this over here where it's level and I can tell it when it's level because the the line of the the rubber will meet up with the linear you know where it meets you know with the Legos and uh, and that's another great thing for using the Legos so four hours later that half will be done we'll pour it we'll take the clay out pour the other half four hours later we got ourselves another mold all right so since we know what we're doing we're gonna go ahead and get this away um, and basically all of our chimeras have all of their parts on. Uh, one thing I did to my chimeras is I, I, I just got tired of seeing them with no weapons on them. I mean like hole mounted and, and the turret mounted. But I wasn't set on which, you know, weapons I wanted on there. So I put a, just a tiny little bit of glue at the top of these and on the top of the hole mounted weapon. So... Now all of them have a turret and hole mounted heavy bolter at the moment. Um, the rest of them are back there, you guys can't see it, but, um, or, and eh, maybe you can see right in that corner, you can maybe make out a tank or two. Um, but anyway, um, I was gonna do this setup for all of them. And then I decided maybe three with my wife's help, I was, yeah, she was my 
my uh, advisor looking in, someone who, who's not really familiar with what was going on. I even showed her the video so she had an idea of what I was, you know, had in mind. And um, uh, what was I going to say? Um, hey, that's enough. Stop. Um, gosh, what was I going to say? And then I just narrowed it down to two. I have six chimeras, and I started really thinking about it, and I was like, okay, if these guys were, I mean, initially I was thinking each chimera should have one, right? But I started really thinking about it, okay, that means we're saying that all six chimeras are, are breaching, you know, across the trenches, across no man's land, all as one, and they may, um, but at the same time, I could see where these guys could potentially... Let's just say something went wrong, you know, or, you know, they're part of their standard operating procedure. Again, I'm just, it's just fiction, but their standard operating procedure is, you know, to have a couple of, of tracks, you know, other tracks come up and, you know, provide security for them while they deploy this thing. Um, you know, which is pretty much how it normally go anyway. And I could see that being the case. So, um, I went ahead and went with two. If I decide to change it up in the future, obviously... Well, I have the parts for one more. I don't I don't have these right here and I don't have any more of these. Actually I do have enough of these little mechanisms here. But I don't have any more of these little round pieces here and I don't have any more of these tank uh, supports. And yeah, I could have freaking, you know, made a mold or something like that, but to be honest with you, I didn't I didn't wanna I didn't wanna waste mold material on something that I'm only going to basically use one time. The pipes over here I'll be using not just for this but for my Space Hulk stuff. I mean anything you can imagine. Okay so that's you know that's that's an easy thing. You could say the same thing about the gear but eh I don't know. It's just not not what I'm looking at. Alright so what do we got what do we got next? Um, so what we've got next to put together just get this stuff put away here real quick. And actually I'm going to hold on to those. Uh, I want to get it on my desk. My nice new desk that we built. What we've got left to put together and I'm and I'm trying to think you guys are going to be like Jesus man this, this army's never going to be done. And you're probably not wrong, okay? Um, I'm sure that whether it sees the light of day on the battlefield and actually wars will be one thing, but um, I've got three Lehman Russes, a Bay and Blade, and three Hellhound Devil Dogs up there that need to be put together. We've got the, the Imperial Night Warden. We've got the Hellhound here. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Warhound Titan. We've got the Warlord that's downstairs um, that needs, well, I'd like to put another, a, a better support down the middle um, of its body. Uh, and I have two of them that really need to do that, I need to do that with. Um, and in the process, with the three Lehman Russes that we have left, um, this, this goes there, I was trying to sort it out for the pieces that we had. Um, we also have, and I'm trying to figure this out, how I want to do this. Give me one second, I will be right back. So I have three of these, only one, two of them are for Christmas and then the other one is for Warhammer. An H scale train that I would like to turn into a 40k train. It's big enough, honestly, that you could transport and, and this is how it would be, that you could transport 
I kept a Chimera or a tank, a Lehman Rust tank. To give you an idea in scale, here's a Space Marine Terminator. Oops, sorry. Here's a Space Marine Terminator, and here's the train. I'm not sure exactly how I want to do this, um, but I've got a lot of Gothic stuff. Here's a here's a Creed Creed guy. Um, just to give you some scale, this is as close to the scale of, that it should be as I could get. I don't know if you can see that dude in the window, but this this train set. And it's got many cars I would like to put into this army. We also have, um, I'm trying to think here, we also have the two Gorgons. And this train, well, if I just line it up here as best we can, according to this train, this train is roughly 13 inches long by roughly one, two, about three inches wide and five inches tall. Henry, you're going to get the cone of Dunshire again. Anyway, um, the Gorgon, my understanding, I think I covered this before, but I can't remember, is about three inches high, so not quite as tall. Um, Actually, hold on. I think I can pull this up. Uh, let's see. All right, 242 long in millimeters. So let's see. Just because I'm too tired to figure out the formula at the moment. We said 242. So. It's nine inches long, so it won't be quite as long as this train. It'll be to about right there. Okay. Then 158 wide. Oh, one, I'm sorry. Yeah, so 6.2 inches wide. So it'll be a lot wider than this train. That's gonna be pretty big or pretty wide. And then 84 millimeters tall. I mean, we're rounding here, so 3.30. So, comes to about, about right here on the train, tall. So putting that Kriegsman down next to it, it's right there, about that tall. So that's gonna be a pretty massive vehicle, two, two pretty massive vehicles. And then, of course, we already have an uh, Imperial Knight Warden, uh, so there'll be two for this army. But this is, this is, and this is a fully operational train, by the way. Um, it will definitely go around tracks and things like that. Um, what I was thinking is you can just move it, you know, however many inches, do it like a, literally like a whole. Uh, train heist type thing, you know, stop the train kind of thing. Armor it up. I'm sure there's something I could do. I know that they made one a long time ago. Uh, I sent, it's in my apocalypse uh, deal. Do I have that book down here? Uh, I do. Hold on a second. This is the first, if I'm not mistaken, apocalypse rule book. Okay, uh, let me just put this stuff to the side. And somewhere in here, let me get this train out of the way. Let's see here. I'm still waiting on my damn white dwarf to get here. As well as my, um, oh, what was that? Hold on a second. Oh, by the way, since I'm looking at Eldar, I said, I think I told you guys that I had a Phantom Titan. I don't. I have a Revenant Titan. And I think I also told you that I was 
that my guys were Eandon or something like that, and they were black. No, I meant Althway, not Eandon. Um, anyway, uh, let's see here. I don't know why I'm looking at that. I'm looking for... Okay, it's not here. Wherever the shows like the battles. Okay, that's like an entire chapter. Hold on a second, man. I know there's like a, it's like a fold out thing, I thought. Oh, there it is. Okay. Nope, that's not the one. What the heck is the one I'm looking for? I know that there, it shows like, is it an Apocalypse Reload? Hold on, something. It's thick over here. No. All right, hold on, hold on. That's Epic Armageddon. Where's Apocalypse Reload? Did I not bring it up here? Hmm. Well. I may not have brought it up here, but I could have swore. I could have swore it was in this one. Because it was showing you, like, the whole... I think it was Tyranids against Ultramarines. And they had a picture of the train... That shows how long I've been out of the game. Hold on a second. Let me put this away. It might be in that Apocalypse Reload one. I have that book. I just... I may not have brought brought it upstairs here. To here. Let me, let me just look for it online. I'm sure I can find it. Uh, let's see. For... 40k Imperial Train Armored Train. Yeah, there it is. Okay, we'll look at some of these anyway. Properties. Okay. Alright, so the one I was talking about is this one in particular. Now, as you can see, it's, you know, I would have a ton of work to do to make mine look this cool. I'm not even sure what they did to make that. Um, I'm sure I could get pretty close. Um, looks like some other people have done some things. This looks like an H scale train. Oh, I see what they did here. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, they basically just took this stuff and put it on the outside of it. I could do that. Uh, some Creek guys here. Looks pretty good. That one almost looks orcish, but I, I know it's Imperial. Um, wow, that's a pap paper hammer train. That's pretty awesome. Look at that thing. Um, there's another train. I'm not sure how they made that one. Might be Paper Hammer. That's definitely, definitely Orky right there. That is pretty awesome. I'm saving that. Oh, yeah. Oh, come on. Quit messing around with me already. Let's see. I'm going to save this other picture, too. Just so I have it. Um... Yeah, this is nice. This is real nice. This right here reminds me of that movie Snowpiercer, if you guys have ever seen that one, that movie. Um, it almost looks like 3D, 3D printed, maybe. Uh, let's see. That's definitely stuff added on. There's a 
that train again. I'd love to know how they made it. Um, let's see. Hmm. The heresy train has no brakes. That's pretty cool. Very gothic. A little, little too gothic for my taste, to be honest with you. Like, it's just too, too city. Uh, let's see. Oh, here we go. This looks like when they were making it. Here we go. Imperial Pain Train Conversion. I'm... I'll just keep my mouth shut. I'm not a big fan of this guy right here. Um, just not. But it is what it is. I, I have these pieces. Well, that gives me an idea of the scale. It looks like my train is bigger. Um, my gun is massive. Alright, they didn't really tell us anything. Um, I think somebody did a 3D print deal as well to where you could 3D print the armored train. But where's the fun in that, really? When I have a train sitting right here. The only, the only thing that would be different, ooh, I like that, this dragon wagon with these tanks and stuff. The only thing that would be different with, or with my train is it would probably have to end up being, it would probably have to end up being a little bit wider from putting stuff on the sides. But the great thing about this is the entire side rail here all the way, hold on. The entire side sides here are even. So I could literally just put plastic card on this and it would be like, I mean, nothing. It, it wouldn't be an issue at all. Um, I mean, I may have to put some sprue support down like this over some of the wheels or something like that. Maybe even over this, over the uh, your uh, mechanisms here. But Honestly, I mean, it's it's all it's all straight and level, basically. That's awesome. Just remove this stupid bell in the front. <laughs> uh, I guess we could leave the light intact, right? I don't know. Anyway, I know you guys are probably like, dude, do that stuff some other time. You got like a million freaking models to put together. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. I tell you that right now. You're not wrong. Ooh, that's real nice. I like that gun support. Here, oh, oh. That actually, oh, that's almost as big as my train. Hmm. I see what they did there. That's almost as big as my train. That's a nice, uh, I actually have some of these parts. good ideas in here. I have so many stinking 40k picks and stuff. This is crazy. What the heck was that? Where'd it go? Hold on. I just saw it. There it is. What the heck is this thing? Orcs. 
sail off and oh so there's a bane blade it looks like they did a moon shape oh it's a ship and then the moon shape sails okay okay I like that that's cool Wouldn't that be something to have a navy? Like a, a, you know, a real thing. I mean, I just don't think that's something that really happens. Just taking a look at some of this stuff. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, I guess, oh man, I've never seen that, but that's pretty awesome. Look at that. That's pretty dang awesome. Mount Rushmore, so to speak. Hmm. Well, my favorite book in the world, Brothers of the Snake, right there, man. If you haven't read that book by Dan Abnett, I encourage you to do so. Look at that, man. Imperator Titan, or Imperator Titan, however you want to say it. In the background, that's massive scale war. Epic isn't doesn't even describe it. Um, not sure about that cosplay there. <laughs> But you know what? Hey. Hey for effort, right? I don't know what this guy's doing. Is he some kind of possessed marine or something? That guy, he, he's posed almost like that Dark Angels, his face and everything, like that Dark Angels artwork. I dread not seeing better days, though. I'm just saying. How did we even get involved in this? Oh my gosh. Alright, time to time to kill this crap. Alright, so what are we doing here? What the heck is this? Got some kind of something here. I don't know what it is, but anyway. Um if you are a legitimate person, uh I'm assuming that's Russian. Hello, if you're not, uh, and that's a crazy link, don't do it. Don't anybody click on that. All right, so what are we doing next? We're going straight to these other tanks because we need to get them done. Like I said, we got we got a Bane Blade, three Lehman Russes, three Hellhound Devil Dogs to put together, and. Then we're going to, the way that we're going to do this is we're going to basically start putting chassis together. We're going to do the Bane Blade last, I'm going to tell you that right now. I need to get the, um, I need to get the tank parts out. smaller tanks I mean and I'm hoping that I can get this all done in the next couple of days not the Bane blade but you know um, these other other tanks and I need to. I got college, so gotta gotta focus on that. Got a lot of reading, heavy reading to do. All right, so we got that off to the side. We're gonna put these 
these uh, hellhounds back in here. They'll, they'll do the Lehman Russes first. So we got all their parts, and then I've got the other parts for that one that I borrowed out of there to make the molds. We'll put this away. And like I said, what I'm planning on doing is just putting this the main stuff together that I can. Um, and then I'll uh, I'll go back and attach all the details to all of them. But that's after I sort out how many I have. Because I'm supposed to have extra and I still haven't made the ultimate decision on... Um, if I'm going to put Sponson weapons on the uh, Vanquisher, uh, Forge Wall Vanquisher tanks. Um, I read something somewhere that said you don't get any bonus anymore for the Mars pattern, whatever, so there's no point. I don't know how true that is. I need to do some more research on that just to make sure. Um, but I got plenty of time for that. I mean, I got to. I gotta put treads together or on, you know, clean things up. But this army, my gosh, man, it's massive. But that's what I wanted. I, I, I always said if I was gonna do Krieg, I was gonna go huge. We've got at a minimum 100 troops, regular infantry, not, uh, well, hold on, I take that back. We have 100 troops, but that includes a minimum of 100 troops, but that includes them having heavy weapon squads in, or heavy weapon teams in each squad. Just various things. Gotta make sure I don't chip into that. I, I've had that happen before. I had to go back and fix it. Don't want to do that. I do like the new Lehman Russes uh, or the, all the new stuff as far as putting the treads on. For those of you that aren't familiar with or didn't have the privilege, <laughs> do I say privilege, of doing the other one, you know, the older ones, whew, they weren't exactly hard, but if you weren't paying attention, you really could screw it up and end up having a gap between your treads and I've got a few that are like that and I was just too lazy to go back thankfully they're all on the bottom where you won't see it but that's what it is these as long as you put it in the right slot you won't have that problem they line right up just like you're supposed to
but I'll tell you this as much as it's gonna sound as bad as it's gonna sound I'm gonna be happy when I'm finally done with putting all these tanks together they won't be the last vehicles I have to put together but um, I feel like I've been putting vehicles together forever <laughs> Gosh, I have. Oh, I got 10, 10 Lehman Russes in that army, plus four Chimeras, one Basilisk, and a Manticore in the Steel Legion army. One Imperial Knight so far that goes with that army. And this one, we've got three, six. Nine. Wait a minute. Hold on. I'm missing something here. Oh, six. Twelve. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. Twelve. Twenty-one. Yes, I think twenty-one vehicles in my Krieg army. If I'm not mistaken. These tanks did not come with, huh, none of these tanks came with the, uh, the bulldozers, hmm, well, I don't have any bulldozers on any of them except for the Chimera, so that's okay, um, what was I going to say, hell, I don't remember, ah, when I do that, drop on the floor. Thankfully, the little ones are asleep at the moment, so I don't have to worry about it. I know that my Steel Legion tanks have some bulldozers on them. The blade, anyway. Some of them do. I don't think all of them do. That's fine. They don't need it. I mean, I guess now, I'm trying to remember, I think in 3rd edition, if it had a blade, it was for difficult terrain. Now it's like for assault. Since your vehicles can assault. Alright, let me put this aside. Tip this piece up before I lose it. Henry, Henry, hey, dreaming over there, buddy, Henry, hey, man, he was deep in it, man. So the Dark Reapers have been released, or at least the images, the new ones. I, I don't see why everybody's so excited about them. They look stupid. I don't even like the ones that I have, the faces on them. Henry! Hey! Wake up, boy. Um, that, that stupid stitch smile thing. And it's a very, in my opinion, it's a very uh, lame pose as well. I mean, not too dissimilar from the older ones. Yeah, it'll be, I think they're uh, plastic now. But I can't believe everybody's super excited over them stupid things. 
but you know, each to their own. I'd have to, uh, if I had them, those in particular, and I'm sure the ones that I that I have that are metal, when I finally get around to them, I'll be doing the same thing. I'd have to fill that crap in, man. Can't be looking at that stupid wannabe skull face. It's just ridiculous. Makes zero sense. For as elegant as the Eldar are supposed to be, they're going to have that kind of nonsense going on. Somebody definitely screwed the pooch. I remember back in the day when I first got into Warhammer before I ever had clippers, man. <laughs> Everything was using a razor blade and my gosh was that something. If that if I if I didn't and we didn't know anything about it, that kind of stuff at the time. Um, if uh, if I had to do that now, I I I'd give up. No, I'm kidding. I wouldn't give up, but man, I mean I'm trying to think about how much how many times I destroyed or maimed a space marine or whatever from just trying to cut, you know, and then the blade slips and it, you know, cuts what it shouldn't have cut. And you're just like, damn it, you know. Didn't know half the stuff I know now about how to fix things and, you know, sanding things. And we, we didn't, I mean, you never thought that that was something you did. You just put them together. And, I mean, I'm trying to think back in the day when I was putting together model airplanes, you know, I didn't, it, you know, my family, you know, some of the guys did that, but they weren't like model enthusiasts. They just, you know, put together a car or whatever by the instructions, that kind of thing. And that was about it, you know. Did I not do these? You know what? Now that I think about it, I think I do have one one blade for these Lehman Russes somewhere. Like it's its own thing. I might be wrong, but I don't see it here. I don't see it. Wait a minute. What do we got here? We do have blades. These are because these came with the um, the vanquishers, as well as the extra armor that I've got to make a mold of okay okay so we've got three so I could potentially make a mold of that oh yeah it's it's pretty flat there you go man these molds dude I'm gonna have molds all over the freaking place all right let's let's sort out our, our business here what do we got going here? We got right, no idea, left, no idea, probably a left as well, it's probably a right, right. Um, 
what, what, what's going on here? I'm confused. Left. Okay, I see what's going on. I see what's happening here. So, this needs to go with that. 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 Here we go. Being a little ridiculous. Grab out our glue. I knew what I did with my sanding block. I'm gonna make this a lot simpler. It's probably in a box somewhere. These look pretty clean though. those uh, bulldozers blades come out good I may just uh, replace the old ones on the Lehman Russes the old other Lehman Russes with those they look more me meteor you know, anyway meteor yeah all this looks pretty clean How's it going? Say hello. We're uh, we're making three Lehman Russes to go with the Bane Blade and three Hellhounds. But I uh, oh, guess they got offline. Didn't see you fast enough. I guess my apologies. With that being said, guys, I'm probably going to go ahead and call it a night. It's pretty late. And uh, my little girl sounds like she's waking up. It's time for a bottle. So, thank you guys for tuning in. Hope it was a little more entertaining. And thanks for sticking with me on this journey. We'll see you next time.